Hi guys, it's Dr. James Simcock here from Southpaws uh, in Melbourne, Australia. Today we're going to record a short video on TPLO preoperative planning and postoperative assessment. We've put a couple of videos up on our uh, Southpaws live stream channel recently um, of the TPLO procedure, so I thought I'd give you uh, some insight into the planning and the postoperative assessment for these cases. Just before we do that, I just wanted to remind you guys that if you're interested in these continuing education or live streaming videos that we do at Southpaws, then please look for us on Facebook, uh, search for Southpaws, and if you're in the veterinary industry, you can join the closed group, and from there we can send you information regarding any of the continuing education and streaming that we have going on. So we're going to do our TPLO plan. When we do this TPLO plan, we are going to really be working off a lateral stifle radiograph. And on this stifle radiograph, the first thing we're going to look at is what the tibial plateau angle is. And the tibial plateau is represented by this line just here. I'll just try and highlight that for you. So it's this one just there. And we want to look at the angle that that makes with the long axis of the tibia, which is this line uh, right here. So we're going to measure our, or put a line on our long axis of the tibia, which goes from the intercondylar eminences right there, all the way down to the center of the talus. And then we're going to put our tibial plateau um, line, which represents the tibial plateau, looking at our landmarks on the cranial aspect of the tibial plateau and the caudal aspect of the tibial plateau just there. A little indentation um, at the cranial aspect of the tibial plateau that we want to aim for. And then we look at the angle between these two lines. And what we've got here is 61.7 degrees. Now, we're not going to use 61.7 degrees um, on our charts when we look at um, the TPLO and how much we rotate by. The tibial plateau angle is actually represented by um, 90 degrees minus 61.7. So the tibial plateau angle is actually this angle just here. So we've got 90 degrees, um, and then we're going to take away 61.7, and that's going to leave us with 28.3 degrees, which is our tibial plateau angle. Okay, guys, so the next part of our plan is to actually work out where we're going to make our osteotomy. We're going to need to work out what size saw blade we're going to use. We want to try and uh, get, develop some measurements so on our x-ray so that when we get into surgery, we can make sure that we put our osteotomy in an accurate location. So we're going to use some planning software called uh, VPOP Pro to do this. Uh, really nice software. And what we've done is calibrated that image with our calibration markers, which are down here and here. Um, and then we have worked out our tibial plateau angle already. Now we're selecting a saw blade. Um, we're going to go with a 27 millimeter saw in this particular patient. Uh, once we've done that, we can then set the program to cut out a section of bone, which we're doing now. Once we've cut out that section of bone, we can then uh, rotate that piece of bone around. Um, and we have an angle of um, 28.3, so we're going to rotate that by about kind of 25 degrees or so. Um, and we can rotate that into this position here. We want to end up with a post-operative tibial plateau angle of about uh, 4 or 5 degrees, ideally. Next thing we can do is actually select uh, an implant uh, template to sit on the x-ray um, and then we can select different sizes left and right. Here we're using a VOI plate and we can select the different sizes and move that over um, and just make sure that we're going to actually have an adequate um, amount of bone stock in the proximal and distal segment to be able to get our plate in place. So there's a couple of extra things I just want to point out to you guys when we're planning our location of our osteotomy. First thing is, and also picking the size of our saw blade, first thing is we want to have our center of rotation um, right over the intercondylar eminences, so right around this point here. So when we uh, put our template of the saw blade on there, we want to make sure that the central point is right on those intercondylar eminences or, you know, within a couple of millimeters from there. The second really important thing is to look at the tibial crest and look at the shape of the tibial crest. And we want to have the tibial crest, once we've made our cut, that is wider at the base than it is at the tip. So we're having a nice trapezoid kind of shape. We don't want to have a situation where we have a very skinny tibial crest and so if our cut came down here and we had a very skinny narrow tibial crest because if we had a very skinny tibial crest like that we could end up in a situation um, where we end up getting a fracture uh, through the tibial crest so those two things are really really critical when we're doing this plan so in this second video we're actually now going to go ahead and measure um, some landmarks and some distances so that we can take our plan that we've made on the x-ray and, and take it in the operating room and make sure that we're going to get our osteotomy in the exact location that we want. So I'm just going to play this video here. To do this we're going to take three measurements um, which we refer to as D2 which we're measuring now. 
um, we're going to take a measurement from the tibial crest to the proximal aspect of the tibia. We're going to measure D1, um, which is this next line, um, and that's going to give us another measurement in 14.1 um, millimeters. And then we're going to measure a third line, which is going to go from just behind the medial collateral ligament um, to the caudal aspect of the tibia where the um, osteotomy is going to exit the bone. And so now when I get into the operating room, we can literally take our measurements that we've taken um, for D2 here, D1 and D3, and we can actually um, put those measurements onto the uh, bone um, using electrosurgery or uh, an osteotome. And then we can actually put our osteotomy and plan our osteotomy with our saw right on those points. And so it gives us a very accurate and very um, consistent um, location for our osteotomy off our plan. And again, that's really important to make sure that we have um, a wide enough tibial crest in this location here. In um, most dogs, we want to try and get at least a centimetre of bone or 10 millimetres of bone, especially in a dog greater than 15, 20 kilos, um, to make sure that we have a um, reduced risk of a tibial crest fracture. So that's uh, how we measure our D1, D2 and D3 landmarks. So now we've been into surgery, we've done our tibialo procedure, and now we're going to look at our post-operative x-rays. So a couple of things we want to look for on the x-rays. First thing we want to do is measure our tibial plateau angle again. So here we've uh, measured our angle. Uh, we've looked at the same landmarks, intercondylar eminences up here. We've looked at the center of the talus. Um, we've got the same landmarks at the caudal, cranial and caudal aspect of the tibial plateau. And we've got an angle here of uh, 97.9 degrees. So our TPA, our tibial plateau angle, is going to be 97.9 um, minus 90 degrees. And that's going to give us an angle of 7.9 degrees. And so, you know, we want to be somewhere around about 5 to 8 degrees, ideally. So I'm happy to um, think that that um, angle of rotation is adequate for this particular case. Second thing that we want to look at is um, the osteotomy. We want to make sure that we've got a nice compressed osteotomy through this section here, which it looks nice and good, so there's not a big gap there. Um, I also think it's really important to pay attention to where we put our um, anti-rotational pin, which is this uh, radiolucent line we can see through here. And we really want that point to be on or above the tibial tuberosity, so just on that point or above it. We don't want to see it anywhere below that point because, again, that would be a stress riser. And if you had a combination of a narrow tibial crest uh, with a jig pin, uh, sorry, an anti-rotational pin hole oh, that's below the tibial uh, tuberosity, that would be a concern for a possible post-operative fracture of the tibial crest. Our implant location is good, our alignment looks good, um, and so on the lateral view I'm pretty happy with everything there. On the AP view, um, what we're looking for is to make sure that all of the screws are engaging both the cis and the trans cortex on both sides. Um, these screws are a little bit long here, but I'm not too concerned about that. Um, proximally, we've got a nice uh, perpendicular cut through the bone, um, so I'm happy with that. Um, and our plate location is good, there's no screws penetrating to the joint. So. Alignment appears excellent, so with this case, I'm very happy with our post-op x-rays. So thank you for listening. Again, if you are interested, please uh, get onto our um, Facebook um, page at Southpaws, and if you're in the veterinary industry, join the closed group, um, and we can give you some more information on any uh, further continuing education that we're doing. Thanks, guys.